Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for showing up here at this early hour. Uh, I wasn't expecting a, a, such a great turnout, so I'm already very pleased. So, um, thanks, Colin, for the introduction. Um, most things have been said already. Um, I work at Combel, which is a Belgian hosting company, where I'm the local WordPress expert uh, kind of thing. Um, I'm mostly passionate about WordPress security and WordPress performance, so loading time, uh, keeping out hackers, things like that. Um, but since I work at technical support team, obviously I deal with debugging WordPress on a daily basis, uh, helping customers resolve issues. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you. Ever launched a new website and experienced something like this? Perhaps one updating your aims. <laughs> <laughs> or even when migrating your website. <laughs> who, who has seen this one before? Just <laughs> show of hands. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Probably everybody. Or this one. Always oh, a nice one. <laughs> I hate that one. <laughs> so, yeah. We've basically all seen these kind of things before. And we usually feel like just smashing the keyboard around and going on the rage. But that's not the answer. The answer lies in error codes and other kind of things. So basically, uh, before we can dive into debugging, we need to understand that there are two kinds of error codes you might run. <coughs> Obviously, there are more kinds of error codes, but these are the two you'll run into most often. So there's 400 based error codes and 500 based error codes. Simplified, it will mean 400 you stuffed up, it's a client error. 500, it's the server who's doing something it shouldn't be doing or not processing something correctly. So that's a really simplified version. So you have like the 400s are bad requests, so you're sending a bad request to the site or whatever. Uh, forbidden, 404 not found is the most common one. So basically, this is not the page you're looking for. And then 500 ones are things like internal server error, uh, not implemented, service unavailable, gateway timeouts, things like that. Basically, that's your server saying, I don't have it. Now, the most important part is how to debug. <coughs> there are actually several tools we can use, and I'll go over them throughout the talk. So we have the server logs, obviously. Uh, we have WP debug, WP CLI, script debug, save queries, and a couple of plugins we could also use. So first one would be the server logs. When having an issue of, uh, with any kind of site, who of you automatically resorts first to the server logs? Just by show of hands. A couple of people, more than I expected, which is a good thing. It should basically be your first step or one of the first steps you do because the server log will contain well, quite a lot of information on, on what's going wrong with the website. Now, there's several types of errors in the logs. Uh, obviously, you don't want fatal error because that's just the execution of PHP stops and it's over and out. You have some warnings and notices, and you have some limit-related uh, errors. Now, with limit-related, I think you all know memory limit errors or um, uh, so other resource limits. So let's show a few examples here. So this one, for example, client denied by uh, server configuration is one which is fairly common when, for example, something is being blocked uh, via the HD axis. So if you see this, you can fairly immediately resort to your HD axis or some other hidden file. <coughs> this is one of the, lim uh, the uh, limit-related uh, ones. So this one. This 
This is a call being made to an external uh, service, and the external service just doesn't respond in time. It failed. That this one is the killer. So if we have this, this usually is well, some kind of bug or some coding error or whatever. But it's it's severe enough to actually just crash the entire processing of the PHP, and thus resulting mostly in white page of death or something like that. Internal server error, if it's if it's the, the error is severe enough to entirely crash PHP, it could also result in sort of an internal server error. And that's why we use WP debug. Have, has anyone used it before? <coughs> A few people. Okay. Cool. cool. So inside WP config, we have a simple line which is automatically by default sent to WP debug is false. We can turn it on by saying well, put it on true, and then it will show you whole lot of more uh, of error related information which will help you trace the origin of the, of the problem. Now there are a few extra statements you could add to that um, because we all know showing errors in a production environment is probably not the best practice. Um, so that's why we could first and foremost add the line wp debug log set to true which will create a debug.log file in the WP content folder, which is handy. But furthermore, we can also add this one, WP debug display false. So this would result, uh, result in this combination, which is, to, in my opinion, the ideal setup. So we enable WP debug, which will start logging uh, all, for all errors. Will enable <coughs> debug log, so it's the, the information gets written to the debug.log in WP content, and we won't display it publicly. So we enable WP debug as false, uh, debug display as false. Now, WP CLI, um, it's a great tool. It's uh, been taken into the into the core projects of WordPress. Uh, <coughs> year, year and a half ago, something like that. There are some great tools we can use. So if your uh, hosting company doesn't have WP CLI on their servers, please do yourself a favor, do everyone a favor, go and nag to them about it. It should, be, it should be standard on any server where you have SSH access and where you're hosting WordPress. Um, it gives you a few commands, so like a WP plugin list, it's, it's fairly obvious what it does. It will render your list with uh, all the plugins, if they're active or not, and which version, if there are any um, if there are any updates available, things like that. So the most interesting part is actually WP plugin deactivate and activate, because well, we all had that case where we just installed a new plugin and suddenly we have widescreen dev. In most cases, we are able to connect uh, via SSH and just do WP plugin deactivate, uh, let's say, for example, uh, Yoast SEO or any other plugin, Agismap or whatever, and you'll be able to disable it from the command line, restoring access and functionality to your site, which is a very handy thing. Same thing with WP team uh, commands. It also allows you to activate, deactivate teams, get a listing. Um, there are also a few new statements. The WP checks and core was in quite some while, uh, and WP checks and plugin is since a version 1.5 uh, included in WP CLI. These are great tools because if your site is, for example, hacked or it is doing something which you're not quite understanding, and there's even the slightest um, impression that there might be something going on there, you can always run these commands. These commands will test and verify all of the core files, or all of the plugin files, against the version in the repository, and <coughs> show you a list of files that should, should uh, not be there, or have been altered, which can help greatly while resolving issues. So this, this one is actually called 
especially since we have the addition of the, the plugin version. And is that, if I'm not mistaken, they're currently, currently crafting a uh, team command as well that might take a while before that comes out. Well, another cool thing was uh, sometimes WPC Live produces unexpected results. So the command crashes. So in this case, I ran a WP team list. It didn't give me the output I was expecting. However, it did give me this unexpected and some variable in well, some websites uh, postended.php. Now, the fun, the fun thing was, since there's no uh, WP checksum team, I never noticed this, but this was the cause of an error. And it didn't show up anywhere else until I ran that command, and that's how I was able to find that there was actually a this was actually a case of hacking. So this is an unexpected uh, extra result from WPCI, but it can turn out to be very handy. So don't start shouting or screaming when WPCLI does not produce this because the output itself of the error can be handy as well. So that's a, a great side effect. Let's call it uh, let's call it that. So as you can see, this is obvious. This is handy. Then there's the script debug. So this is a cool thing uh, because by default uh, everything is being minified. So uh, JavaScript files, uh, some, some CSS files. And if you're having issues, it can help to just add this little uh, little tag to your WP config which forces WordPress to use the non-minified versions of those libraries, those files, uh, which can easily help you while debugging any theme or plugin or whatever related issues. So this can be a very handy tool. Safe queries, which is a, another great one. This is actually uh, a great one to do some checks and do some analysis on some slow loading sites where there's a, you have the impression that it might be query related. So by adding this one to WP config, you force WordPress to store all the information on the queries into a WP deviated array, which can then be outputted. So you could visualize it simply by, for example, adding this piece of code to your foodle.php which would then write all of the output just uh, below the site. So can be handy in some cases. There are some plugins as well we, which we could use. First one, uh, Core Control. Um, has anyone even heard of it or used it before? Okay. Um, you can use it to, to just do some extra things uh, which can be handy in the debugging process. So you can verify how prompts are, being, uh, are, are working. You can uh, basically take manual control of upgrades or force upgrades and things like that. Uh, you can do some extra logging, uh, tests on the transport methods, things like that. Uh, this is basically some more advanced stuff which you probably won't uh, be needing right off the bat, but it's there if you need it and it's, it's great and handy. But, and I had to use it like, in the 10 years I'm, I'm working at the support desk right now, I had to use it two or three times to get something resolved. This gives you an indication on that it's not, a, well, it's not a thing you'll be needing by default, not at all. Uh, WP debug bar is another great solution. So if you're um, not eager to start uh, adding the safe queries code to your, to your foot.php, for example, you could simply <coughs> use this plugin, uh, which does the same thing. It will just ask you to add a statement to the WP config, but then it will add a bar on top of your WordPress uh, admin area, which can uh, just look up the results and see what's uh, going on there. Now there's always a number of typical errors we all come, come to face one day uh, or another. Like, who's had this one before? 
completely the empty media library while still your files are there. Okay. Usually, it has something to do with this. This is the uh, upload path cell in your WP options table. Um, we often see this after the migration, so you've moved hosts from one, from one company to another, and suddenly this stops working. Check your upload path, because probably your previous host had a different path being set there than your current host, and just emptying it or changing it to do it the correct path for your current host, depending on their requirements for their environment, will resolve it and the media will just magically reappear. Here I kind of sabotage my own site, just to make my point. <laughs> so we have a uh, CSS-less, uh, layout layoutless version of the, of the website. Uh, same thing here. Usually, it has something to do with uh, your, your uh, site URL or home URL just not being set completely correct. As you obviously see, I just sabotage it myself. This is, this is not a type where I just did this intentionally. And then there's this one, which is, is more or less on the rise I, in my personal experience. I see this, I used to see it like <coughs> once or two, twice a week, and now I see it ten times a day. Um, I don't know why, but it's, it's increasingly, uh, uh, it's being increasingly. So the issue here is, cannot modify header information, headers already sent. It's a fairly common, uh, fairly common error. Um, possible cause, um, white spaces before or after the uh, opening and closing tags for PHP. Um, some other functions creating some output. Um, headers already sent basically means, well, well, it's intended, so if it's not related to this or this, every function is going to create uh, some kind of output which will result in headers being sent. But the problem is that headers are normally, headers are only expected to be sent once. Now, if you have several uh, plugins running functions that are producing output, headers will be sent multiple times and, well, server and browser will go, what is this? So what is this madness? So there's a, sorry, just a pass break there. Um, there's a, another great fix to do this, uh, to resolve this. And it's actually just by enabling output buffering in your PHP setup. It's not the best way. The best way would be avoiding things like this, things like this. But output buffering will get you a long way. And then, um, back to the nearby future, um, who has heard about Thai? This is a great future for WordPress. Uh, it's a new project um, where we're actually uh, involved, but, um, the team involved is actually doing some code checks, um, making sure that, that WordPress code and eventually also plugin the team code will uh, conform to the necessary standards within the PHP language. So in the end resulting in better code. So they're, they're doing this by running automated tests against a whole bunch of uh, well, the core plugins. Um, and just the idea would be that uh, whenever a plugin is, is put into the repository, it would be tested automatically and the developer would get some feedback on this needs to be changed or this isn't optimal. Um, just making cleaner code in the end for all of us. Um, they're using uh, yeah, it's escaping, it's, uh, escaping me. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try to get back to that. Um, but it's an automated tool, um, and they just recently used it to just check and alter about 100,000 lines of code in the WordPress core and nothing broke. It's a really good tool. Um, now, important. What can you do as a user? Well, basically, 
report bugs and issues to developers. Um, and don't do it in a manner of, hey, I need this fixed right now, this is an error. <laughs> Please don't do that. Uh, most developers in the WordPress community aren't even doing this full time as their main job. We're all in it just because we love WordPress and we want to make it better. Uh, but be, be constructive and provide as much information as you can. Uh, this will help the developer to go a long way and then to meeting your needs and getting things fixed. So at least try to provide some information on how to reproduce the error. That, that would be great. Um, that's about what I have right now. I've been rushing a bit since we started a bit late. Um, are there any questions? I guess.